want to show you with this shading technique. Um, I'm going to be using a ProArt, it's a 2B pencil, but you can you really use any type of pencil that you want. Uh, you can use a HB, you can use a 2B, 4B, just whatever you desire to use. But just for this shading demonstration here, I'm going to be using a 2B pencil. And like I said, it really doesn't matter uh, what type of pencil you use because uh, you're going to be using all sorts of uh, graphite whenever you start shading. But the purpose of this uh, lesson here is to show you basically how to do some uh, shading con concepts. And what I have already done here is, uh, as you can probably see, I have already sharpened this pencil. Uh, it's a freshly sharp pencil. And that means that it has a sharp uh, tip on it. And you don't want to shade with a sharp tip. It's going to be kind of hard to shade with a sharp tip. Uh, if you do, here's what you're going to get. You're going to just get uh, just some hard lines, you know, and that's not going to be shading at all. Uh, it, it may look a little bit softer on the video here, but believe me, you're going to be getting hard lines, and that's really not a good, good concept of shading right there. Uh, you don't really want to get hard lines. What you want to do is get smooth lines. So if you just sharpen your pencil, which you will always do, here's a good exercise to do. You want to you want to actually shade with a blunt end of the tip. You don't want to shade, shade with a sharp end. You want to use a blunt end of the tip. And so here's how you can prepare a freshly sharp pencil. Um, you just want to basically take and hold it at the angle that you're going to be holding it in to do your shading. Uh, you're not going to never shade you know just straight up like this you don't want to hold your pencil just straight up and do any shading you always want to go take your pencil and you want to hold your pencil at an angle on your paper and here's a way to prep your freshly sharp pencil though just take the angle that you're that you're going to be used to shade and just kind of uh, make it blunt and how you do that is just keep uh, just doing some shading or actually not really shading but you're just making marks on your paper here um, until you just kind of make that in a little blunt and then uh, it gives you that good angle and you just keep doing it until you feel comfortable with it but just remember to hold it at the angle that you're going to be actually using to do your shading with and you can work on that uh, angle you can work on how to hold your pencil not everybody holds their pencil the same way and besides just trying to shade with the very tip of the pencil or the graphite pencil whatever you're using there uh, there's really no wrong way to hold your pencil and it just depends on how you're comfortable with and just a few strokes you know on your paper at that holding it at the angle that you're going to be using the shade and that should be good enough and here's here's one thing that i do want to show you to start out with before we can shade there is different ways that you can hold your pencil and try different methods that i show you here uh, if you have your own method uh, that's great uh, not all methods will work with with everybody we're all different we all uh, hold our pencil different we all feel comfortable at holding our pencil at different angles but for the most part most people will take their pencil and just put it in your fingers here uh, and just put your thumb on the pencil and just turn your hand over and a lot of people prefer to shade this way uh, most of the time you know it's a pretty good little technique but what you want to do is you're wanting to use that blunt end that you've made blunt uh, and not shade with the pointed end. And you just want to just lay down some shade. And the more pressure that you put down on the pencil, the darker that your values are going to be. And then the lighter pressure that you use, the lighter the values are going to be. Now we're not going to be teaching you blending in this video here we're just teaching you how to shade and how to properly hold your pencil how to prepare your pencil as we have just done 
And, you know, this is a pretty good little shading technique. I don't use it a whole lot, but there might be times, you know, when I want to work around my landscape or my drawing, uh, even if I'm doing a real portrait drawing, then I may want to hold my pencil at this angle at, at different times. But that is actually one way to hold your pencil, is just put it in your hand, put your thumb on it, and just start shading that way. And you get a little bit of control this way if you if you're doing it, if you're going to use this method by putting your index finger on on the pencil here, and you just start shading. That gives you a little bit of control, you know, to be able to shade that way. And it's not a bad little way to hold your pencil. You know, you get good control with it that way. And another way is. I wouldn't recommend trying to hold it like you're fixing to write something because you can't really get it over on the edge like you need to get it on the edge. Um, but if you go back just a little bit, then you can take and you might can get a little bit of an edge here. And then you can just shade this way and you can have a fairly amount of control when you're shading this way. And one thing that you need to remember is when you're shading if you hold your pencil closer to the tip or to the point you know you're going to get a smaller area you know if you just want to shade small areas then the closer to the tip that you hold your pencil then the smaller the areas you're going to be able to shade but if you put your fingers on back and hold it further back toward where the uh an eraser would be so to speak then you're going to get a longer stroke so if you've got a lot of areas that you want to shade a lot of areas that you actually want to cover then the closer to the tip you hold your pencil the shorter the shade area is going to be or the smaller the shade area is going to be but if you hold it back further then you're able to just get a wider area. You're able to cover a wider area, you know, such as that. So holding it this way, this is a second way that you can hold it. It's actually the same way if you were going to hold it like this between uh, your index finger, your middle finger, and put your thumb on it like this. Like, you know, some people write this way. The majority of the people do. Uh, but still holding it real close to the point like you would if you're going to write something you just bring it back just a little bit and still just holding it straight down though in the same way that you were if you were going to write something you just kind of take and you just kind of flip your wrist over it's just a matter of just flipping your wrist over like this just flip your wrist over and once you flip your wrist over then you can start shading it helps you get on the blunt side of your lid there on the graphite. If you feel comfortable doing it that way, you know, that's great. That's another method to hold it. And another method that I prefer to use is I always hold my pencil about three quarters of the way down. And when I do, what I do is, is I always let the end of my pencil just rest right in here, you know, between this little V. I always just let it rest right, right in there. And then I just use the blunt end. And then I just start my shading. And like I've already mentioned, the more pressure you, you place on the on the pencil, the darker your shade is going to be, and then the least amount of pressure you put on the pencil, then the lighter your shade there is going to be. And even if you don't feel like you're able to cover an area good just with a good shade, if you feel like you might be leaving some white space, see how this has a little bit of white space here and a little bit of a white space there. Then you may want to try, you know, a different technique. Uh, may want to want to use a different uh, grade of pencil there. But I always remember to just 
use that blunt side that you created on that on your lid or on your graphite uh, once you've created that blunt side and just use that side as much as possible for all the time actually because you don't want to use a sharp point of, of the pencil but it's just as simple as just lightly holding your pencil that's what you want to do you just want to lightly hold the pencil and you don't want to put a lot of pressure now I'm going to put a lot of pressure now if I put a lot of pressure here I'm going to get a good dark value and how can you tell if you're actually shading correctly well one way to tell is if, if the graphite uh, is just really smooth across your shaded area where you've actually shaded if you've got a smooth I mean it's going to have some texture to it but what I mean is it's not going to be like this here where I was prepping my pencil it's not going to be just just lines like that that's not what you want to do you don't want to just put in a bunch of lines uh, because that's really not a good shading technique there because you got a lot of hard lines but basically what you want to do is you just want to take and you want you want that graphite to be laid down just real smooth and if it's just laid down real smooth all across your paper then you know you really have uh, some good shading going on and you don't want any lines in it like that basically you know it's okay you know when you're shading if you have a little bit of white space in there because uh, nine times out of ten whenever you're shading something you're going to take and blend it anyway whether you take and blend it with a blending stump a tissue or whatever you, uh, your blending tool is but what you want to do is prevent having these hard lines right here in the mix of your shading um, and the way to do that is to use the techniques that I've showed you uh, just take and hold your pencil uh, about halfway or middle ways up and then just turn your wrist over and then you can just start shading you can just start laying down the graphite just like that getting that smooth texture across your paper do some real light shading like I'm doing here on the right side you can see the difference between the darker values and the lighter values here <clears throat> now let me get a clean piece of paper here and just show you a completed just gonna do like a complete mid-tone here it's not really gonna be real dark and it's not gonna be just real light and see my pencil kind of skipped on that one because my point of the tip uh, have raised up just a little bit and that right there is not what you're going to want to do because once you lay down some dark values of shading and then you go into some lighter values like I'm going a light here see we see a problem here we see a darker line right here so what you want to do is always start out light you can always start out a little bit light you can always go darker it's always best to start out just shading a little bit light and see how much how how much smoother that that winds up being now when you find yourself shading a lot you're going to find yourself uh, getting a lot of graphite build up right here on your pencil and what you'll want to do is you'll want to just take a pencil sharpener then you'll want to sharpen it a little bit and then just take and do that little trick that I showed you you know getting the edge real a good blunt edge just take making several marks on your paper here at the holding holding your pencil the same angle that you're going to be used be holding it when you're shading and then when you begin to shade
here's what you'll get. You'll notice you'll get a lot smoother shade going on here and you're going to be eliminating some of these hard lines. And the reason for some of those hard lines is, is because once your graphite starts getting built up just a little bit on the, the edge of your pencil here, see where that's starting to build up? Uh, and that's going to happen when you shade. But you always want to just keep that clean. Just keep a clean, clean area there. And that way you'll want to always want to come away with a good, good even tone of shade. And that way you're avoiding these lines. Uh, you're not going to get all these real harsh lines in the midst of your shading, you know, like right in here. You're going to get some darker areas depending on uh, how much good control you have on your pressure. And let's just do one more. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to hold it like I normally hold it with that uh, my thumb holding the edge of the pencil with in, in the little V. I just kind of let it rest like this in, in the little V as you'll notice right in here. I just let it rest. And once I do that, then I can start laying down my graphite and you can have, you know, pretty good control with it. And then it gives you some pretty good, pretty good, you know, values here. And then I can get a little bit lighter, you know, and get a little bit more lighter as I go. And just don't put as much pressure on it. If you want to get real light shading, just don't put a lot of pressure on it. As you can see here, it starts to fade uh, where I've gotten just real light pressure on, on the pencil there. So it's just a good good technique. Uh, hold the pencil how you want it. Uh, another way is putting it right here like I showed you in the beginning. Put your thumb on the pencil, your finger on top of the pencil. And then start shading. That'll give you some pretty good, pretty good bit of control there. Uh, a lot of smooth shade. And then the other way, like I showed you, like I do, uh, just take and put your pencil, let it rest in the V there, and just, then just start shading. One thing you're going to find is you're going to find that you can make a, a better shade, a consistent shade, when you get comfortable holding the pencil, you know, the way that you feel comfortable holding the pencil. If you're holding the pencil uh, one way and it's not really working for you and you're not really getting a good, uh, a lot of good graphite on the paper, then your angles are, are not really correct. And if you can't get your angles correct one way, then you will want to try it the other way. And another way you could do it is just kind of hold it the same way. Uh, between your fingers and your thumb and you can always turn the pencil however you want to and you can start uh, doing a lot of vertical shading the ideal, the ideal thing on shading is, is to be able to just use different angles because there's going to be times when you're actually doing a drawing and you're not going to want to get uh, your hand on the graphite because you don't want to get the oils from your skin on the on the paper. You're going to want to kind of take the pencil and you want to just hold it to the end and you want to reach up to the very top of your drawing, maybe like this, where you can reach without touching your your drawing down here below. And then you can get some shade wherever you need to get some shade. Uh, for instance, if you were going to be shading uh, a sky and shading in some clouds or what have you. There's different ways of doing that. Of course, whenever you are shading, you can always take a piece of paper. If you just want to rest your hand, just take and lay down a piece of paper uh, on your drawing, put your hand on it, 
Uh, of course, in this case here, I've got a little bit of pencil shavings here that got on to my paper, but that's okay. This is just practice paper here. Um, but you can always lay down a piece of paper on top of your graphite. That way you're not going to get any oils from your skin on your paper. And then you can just start shading and doing whatever you need to do on the other areas of your drawings. But this right here is a good technique, uh, different ways that you can hold your pencil and to help you, you know, shade a lot better. And just remember, always hold your pencil at an angle. However you choose to hold your pencil, if you choose any of the methods that I've shown you, or if you have your own method, always remember you want to just shade with the blunt side of the, of the tip there. You don't ever want to try to just go straight on with it because it's all sharp. And it's not going to shade. It's just going to put some hard lines on your paper. And it could uh, mess up the tooth of your paper as well. So just always remember, just hold the pencil however you're comfortable using the methods that I've showed you. Or your own method. But whichever method you use to be able to do, do correct shading, you just always want them to shade with the blunt side of the, of the pencil there. And if you really want to get in some real light shading, then the more flat that you hold hold your pencil, then the more type of texture you can get with shading. You can get some dark to very light textures. Might take you a long time, you know, uh, longer to do it that way. But the best form of control is is just taking and controlling it with the pressure. You can make it dark and then you can ease off on your pressure a little bit and then you can just make it light. That right there is really the best method to do. Well, all right, uh, that's it uh, for this lesson. I hope you learn how to shade. Uh, remember, just use the blunt side of the pencil. Don't use the point because it's just hard, it will make hard lines. But if you just practice holding your pencil the ways that I've showed you, and you can you play around with it and practice uh, holding it the way you know that you feel comfortable holding it. There's no wrong way or right way to hold your pencil, except doing it straight at the tip. That now that's a wrong. That is the only wrong way that there is. But if you're using the blunt of the pencil. And as far as holding your pencil, there's no wrong way to hold your pencil, no right way to hold your pencil. It's just however you feel comfortable holding your pencil. Then you can just get a lot of good shades of graphite. Uh, just remember the more pressure you put on the pencil, the darker that your shade's going to be. And then the lighter you... Lighter, the lighter pressure you have on your pencil, then the lighter the shade is going to be. And that's, if you remember those tips, then you would be just fine in shading. Well, that's it for this video, and I appreciate you watching this video, and I hope you learned some shading techniques. And visit my website at visionsingray.com. Uh, I also have my blog website that's at visionsingray.com. Uh, slash visions in gray underscore blog and you can find more shading techniques there you can find a lot of drawing lessons there uh, that i teach and i look forward to seeing you there